All right, so good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Christine Girardi, and welcome to Not at the Museum Thursday night. As usual, I would like to begin our program with a land acknowledgement. The Niagara region of Ontario is located on the traditional shared territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Chinatown peoples. The Chinatown people have called these lands home for thousands of years, and more recently, the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee have been sharing the land as one dish, one spoon treaty territory. This is our second Living Out Stories of the Year, and the Niagara Falls History Museum is honored to be hosting these evenings designed for the LGBTQ plus and straight communities alike. Each night, we welcome a special guest to share their personal experiences of living out in their lives and communities. The City of Niagara Falls and the museum is proud to be seen as an ally and safe space to help facilitate these much needed conversations in the Niagara region. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This program offers an open dialogue about gender and sexuality. Please note there are references of a sexual nature during the conversation. And without further ado, I would like to introduce the person responsible for these fabulous series, tonight's host, Fallon Shaw. Hello, Christine. Thank you so much for an amazing introduction and land acknowledgement. Thanks for joining us as usual. I will disappear and let you do your thing. We'll see you again. Hello everybody, welcome to Living Out Stories. My name is Fallon Shaw, I'm your host. That's right, this is our second segment. Um, today we are going to be talking to Hexi Noir, an amazing drag queen out of Hamilton. Everybody, put your hands together for Miss Hexi Noir. Oh. Hello, hello. Everyone have to cry. Happy Pride to you too. You look fabulous. As do you. I mean, you really take the cake. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I am so excited for this. Thank you for having me. Oh, I, I honestly, I couldn't wait until this happened. Um, I was looking forward to our conversation ever since I asked you to be on the show. Uh, I see yeah. you have someone in the background. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. Ah. yeah. It's just my friend Kermit. You know, we were palling around today doing drag story time. So I thought, you know what? Give him a little special moment behind me. So you can see him on the screen. So yeah, yeah this is uh awesome. yeah, my pal Kermit, my puppet I use for drag story time. Oh, well, let's get right into this because we've got a lot to talk about and not a lot of time. So okay, yeah, cool. you do drag story time and that's what you did today. Let's talk just a little bit about that because that has been a hot topic for a while now here in Canada and in the US. Yes, yes, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, booked and blessed for the month of June, actually, for story times, which warms my heart. I'm so excited and thrilled to be able to offer a story time program to my community. Yeah. Um, it's like very near and dear to my heart as somebody who grew up spending a lot of time in the library, uh, volunteering in the library here in Hamilton to read to youth. Um, it just, it, it makes sense that my drag went in this direction. Um, I just love being in the space. I love being with kids. I love books. I think promoting literacy is so important. So that's the path sort of lately I've chosen to take with my drag. I'm not saying there's not a lot of other things going on too, but uh, drag story time really uh, has taken off and I'm excited about it. So this is definitely one aspect of what you do. Um, yes. I want to tell a little bit about how I came across you. It was very, yeah, great. very, very authentic. It just happened. I was at a place in Finbrook. It was Finbrook Pride. I think it was the second one they had done. And you came out and you did this. I can't even, words can't even explain what you did, but it made, it gave me goosebumps everywhere. I'm sure everyone else was feeling the same thing. And everyone just stopped in awe and was just, you had the stage. And after that, I literally had to get to know who you were because, you know, there, there is a lot of people doing drag, but you bring something very unique. And I want to discuss that. If, if you, maybe you will tell a little bit, what makes you a little different than your average drag queen? Oh, 
Oh, what makes me a little different? Starting um, with your gender, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's, I think that's a perfect place yeah. to start. Um, so I am a cis female drag performer that presents feminine drag, typically. Um, I also am a mother of four children. So, uh, yeah, generally, you know, that's, there's starting to be a little bit more of a mix of different drag performers out within the community, but I'm certainly the only mom, I think I know that does drag, at least in my area. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, cis queer mother of four who, uh, you know, loves all things drag. Yes. Uh, yeah I just um honestly I feel like drag has kind of just always been in my heart as you know as a youth growing up I was always drawn to a larger than life drag personas that I saw in media which you know back in um in the 90s and the 80s there wasn't a lot of that out there but when I did see it I loved it. I knew that th that that embodied everything that felt right for me. <laughs> you know, these larger than life drag personas. I was a theater kid. I loved singing and dancing and music and song. And that was great. Like I loved being involved in theater and being a part of shows. But the roles that I was playing, the things that I were I was doing never felt quite right and it was once I mixed the elements of drag into my performance and the things I loved it was like bingo this is it like I came alive so, so everything yeah clicked together what's that everything well clicked together and you realized that that's it, what you wanted to put out into the world it did but it took a very very long time because like I said, I knew from a young age that that was what I was drawn to. Um, I was really captivated and drawn to Divine, uh, a larger than life character in John Waters movies, right? I was uh, drawn to like the club kids of the New York club scene back in the days of beyond talk shows that were like glittery and glamorous and, you know, unapologetically themselves. And I was like, yes, this, this is me. But at that time, being a cis female, I could go into queer spaces when I turned 19 and see drag performers, but I didn't see me in those spaces. It was typically males doing female drag or trans women doing female drag or women, if they were performing, typically it was king drag. So I, you know, I was like, this is not the space for me. This is not what I'm supposed to do for a long time based on the fact that I was a cisgender female. And it took me getting older and realizing that, you know what? It drag is art. And there is no reason that not anybody can take this art form on and celebrate their queerness and offer something there to their community. So, I think sometimes, you know, sorry to interrupt, but I think sometimes as we get older, we realize that spaces aren't always going to be handed to us. Sometimes we need to take that space and do absolutely. what we feel that we need to do. And if you're an artist, sometimes you really do have to create your own spaces to be able to get your art out. Absolutely. And as a 19 year old girl, I was still trying to wrap my mind around, you know, my sexuality and where I fit into you know, everything in the world. And I, I definitely didn't feel confident and comfortable walking into a queer space and being like, hey, I'm here. I'm a drag queen, like, accept me. So I kind of took a back seat and I, I, I got involved in drag because I loved it so much and I supported it but I didn't perform. So I'm, um, by trade, I'm a hairstylist and a makeup artist. So I found friends and different performers that needed and wanted my service. So I would help with makeup and hair. We'd go shopping and I would help costume and outfit performers. 
And that was my way to sort of, you know, celebrate at that time and have, you know, myself and my heart in that community without actually stepping on the stage yet. And, you know, like I said, it took a number of years and life experiences and, you know, having my four children, um, having one of my children come out to me as um, uh, an asexual lesbian and just really figuring everything out to realize, you know what? My kids need this. I need this. The world needs this. This is actually a really beautiful thing. And it has absolutely nothing to do with any of the body parts I was born with. So I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, I think that you have probably inspired many in your community that didn't think they could do that as well. I think what you're doing is, I mean, it's kind of pioneering. I mean, I know there are other people. I've done some research. There are other yeah. cis women that do this, but you are the first that I have ever come across. And I love that we're sharing your story tonight. And I love that you're a mother and it is a lot different than your average strike team. Um, yeah. You did talk a little bit about your sexuality. I, I would like to touch on that and a little bit of yep. your coming out story. I don't know if you knew my show before, but that's kind of the, fo the focus was coming out story. And I like to include it too in this. So if you want to share a little bit of that, everyone would love to hear it. I know they would. Um, yeah, sure. We can talk about that. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if I've really come out, <laughs> which I know yeah. sounds really weird. I am completely out. Everybody knows I'm queer, but there wasn't like one specific event that really like was a big coming out, like, you know, thing for me, I guess, you know, like I, in the 90s when I was younger I lived as a lesbian female and I didn't really talk about that I think I was still trying to like sort of figure everything out and you know see what felt right for me and I fell in love with a man and mm. got married and had children so for a long time you know I, I, I I've always been queer I knew I was queer but I didn't really talk about my queerness for a long time. And it wasn't until after my marriage sort of um, ended years later that I just came out and was like, lived authentically as myself. And when I did just start putting my drag out there and, you know, sharing, um, who I exactly was I just kind of did it via social media I just kind of threw it all out there like um social media I guess really helped me find like a community and a comfort level I guess to you know just like be like hey world this is who I am oh cool you're like that too and find all these people that you know were the same as me right so I always knew I but it wasn't amazing. like amazing I, I wasn't really vocal beautiful. about it. I didn't really like have this, you know, big story of coming out. I think right? it's interesting that you didn't really have to. I, I does kind of speak for a sign of the times with the internet and being able to find your community. I know when I was younger, it was very different. And when I yeah. came out, I don't even know if I had a Facebook when I came out. Uh, I might be dating myself, but I honestly, I, it was a very different experience for me. And I'm, I'm really glad that you were able to find those people because I know it must have made it a lot easier for you. Yes, most definitely. For sure. For sure. Yeah. In recent years. And I think actually my oldest daughter came out before I did. Like I was out obviously to like a few select friends and, you know, and whatnot and dated over the years, but I didn't have serious relationship so it's like my family wasn't aware I've never had a conversation with my mother about the fact that I'm queer but my mom's on my Facebook she sees me in full drag she knows everything about my life she sees me talking about my sexuality so guess what mom hi I'm out <laughs> like I'm here <laughs> um I don't know I just don't feel like the conversation really needed to be had like I just I put it out there and that was that right Thank so, you for sharing yeah. that because that's a totally <laughs> different outlook to some people. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of weird to think about, right? Because usually it's like, it's very difficult for people to, 
yeah, go to their family and friends and be like, okay, everyone, this is, this is who I am. I think I just, as I got older, I was like, all right, this is who I am. You're going to accept it or you're just going to disappear. And if you disappear, well, I'm okay with that because I'm living authentically as myself. So I think that's so great. So now, uh, I mean, I know that I think sexuality is a bit fluid. It always has been for me, um, you know, being a queer woman, but now that I'm older, I feel like I really know more about myself and kind of know who I am. Are you feeling yeah. like you're at that point in your life? where you oh, just know who you are absolutely absolutely I knew as a child that I was queer obviously I've 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 had feelings for uh men and women my whole entire life but I didn't really know and understand what that was when I was younger and it you know then I, I put myself in queer spaces when I was old enough and I was like oh yeah I do really like women so I kind of put myself into this box of you know what no, I'm totally a lesbian. I only date women. Like, this is it. This is the thing. And then, I, uh, you know, things change. And a few years later, I was like, no, you know what? Still into guys sometimes. It's like, you, like you said, it's ever evolving and it's changing uh, currently. And, you know, the place I'm at is uh, I'm pansexual. I'm totally a hearts, not parts kind of person. And I think, you know what, if the attraction is there and the love is there, then that's, you know, you got to be free to explore those things. So yeah, I'm a queer pansexual woman that who really discovered herself in her uh, early forties. That's so I'm I, almost 50 now. So 50, almost 50 and fantabulous. Oh, thank you. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting you in person and you have such an energy. Like it's, it's, it's nice to be around someone. And when you can feel that, like, there's just a really pure unapologetic, like I am me, I'm a good person. And I could feel that when I was, when I was with you and you know, you're a, you're a hairstylist and you came and did my hair. Like, I think that we were meant to meet. I'm glad we did so that I could have you on the show, but I also get to keep you in my life after this is over. And I think there's really something special about that. Yeah, that's amazing, right? Bimbrook Pride, bringing bringing people together. Um, but yeah, Cohen, social media Cohen too. Cohen so, that. So shout out to Cohen for yes, bringing, Cohen. bringing that to Bimbrook. And they're all doing great. They have a board now and everything. Um, let's yeah. get back into Pride since, you know, that's kind of what the special is today. Yes. Um, what is going on with you for Pride? I, I know you did a story time today, but I'm sure you have some performances coming up. Let's talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, today, uh, today was actually really lovely and touched my heart so much. So, yes, I, I've, I've been doing story time since I started drag. I've been doing drag for five years now. So, uh, started pre-pandemic doing drag, but when I started drag, it was mostly working in nightclub spaces and doing adult-themed night drag, right? But I did have a few opportunities over that time for like. Uh, the Fringe Festival and Indigo Books and and whatnot to bring programs to them for Pride. And um, actually, Cohen. Speaking of Cohen, Cohen approached me about um, about a year ago and said, uh, "Listen, I want to put together some programs for the Hamilton Public Library for story time." And your vibe, you know what, your vibe, I'm just giving, getting all the vibes from you. I think you would be fantastic at doing story time and working with kids. And obviously I jumped on it right away because I was like, brought me right back to what I used to do in my younger years of reading books to kids and being in the library with my children. And they've gotten a little bit older, they're teenagers now. So I don't have those special moments of being in the library space so often with my kids. So I was kind of missing that a little bit. So when the opportunity came up for story time, I was like, yes, please sign me up. He came back and he said, well, you know, they might be interested in story time in a lot of libraries. And I was like, yes, please sign me up. <laughs> so that that happened. And I did a story time out in Bimbrook and it went swimmingly. It was fantastic. Followed by another um, show here in Hamilton at the Terry Berry Library which, you know, some people may remember got a little crazy 
Um, and we can dive into that in a second if you, if you want. But I just wanted to say that those two programs just got me really back into story time filled my heart. I knew that I wanted to continue offering uh, programs of literacy with children and being in that space. So um, that's what's kind of taken off. My pride season is a mix of things, but I do have a lot of family friendly programming. This morning, uh, I was at Rivers and Meadows Early Childhood Education Center here in Hamilton, which was so delightful because it's the first time I've done drag story time with littles, like little, little. We're talking like, <laughs> you know, zero to two years old. So in, you know, in laps and crawling around and, you know, playing with the toys. And, you know, I, I didn't have that communication back and forth with them like I do with an older group. It was a different energy, but it was so beautiful just seeing like, the looks on their face of all the colors and the movements and the songs and the happiness, right? That's why I do it. And that's why, you know, uh, Pride season is pretty much full of story time. Um, I'm doing one for mom's group tomorrow, which will be fantastic. They've planned this whole sushi lunch and drag story time for the moms to bring all their kids out to the patio and and have a, a, a drink and some sushi and enjoy story time with their children. So that's the green and grit. That's going to be lovely. And then, of course, Pride events um, are happening this month. This Sunday, I'm at Binbrook Pride. And um, I'm going to perform uh, one of the numbers that I typically do for my story time so the people in that area, a larger crowd, can see it. Um, older kids, sometimes older kids, teenagers and stuff, they don't want to come out to story time, right? But I still think the performance has a great message. And I want to bring it to like families of all age ranges. So I'm going to bring a little bit of story time to Bimberg Pride, and then some new and fun things that I have planned. But uh, yeah, and trivia. Who knew? I've become a trivia queen now as well. <laughs> so I could use and you some know tips what? on that. I, I I love trivia. It would be amazing to host something like that. Well, I honestly love trivia because trivia is done by theme, right? Yes. And that's kind of my drag. Like I'm not a typical drag performer in the sense that I just um throw on a little costume and boots and do like Britney Spears and like pop songs. That's typically not my drag. I usually pull a lot of reference from pop culture and music and cartoons and, and stuff like that. Typically um, from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, my generation, the things that speak to me and the things that I love, right? Um, one of the first times I got on stage in drag, I got on stage as Ursula. Again, a connection to divine this character that I had loved as a child so I did my whole like big Ursula fantasy but I love trivia because they're themed nights and then I get to come up with a whole new different themed costume for whatever the theme of the trivia night is right and that's another thing I just love about drag it's not even necessarily the performance it's putting all the pieces together yeah you know, creating the wigs as a hairstylist and the costumes and seeing it all come together and then becoming that person and offering that person to everybody and then seeing the joy within the room. That's, you know, that's what I get from it. And uh, yeah, the, the, so I got a RuPaul's trivia and, you know, uh, TV queer, TV queer icons, icons from TV and comics and movies. So I love that. So RuPaul, I, I did read in your bio, you have performed with um, some of the RuPaul uh, gals. Yes, yes. I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It was, uh, it, it was really amazing too that I got to perform with them pretty early on in my drag career. And it gave me a lot of like confidence and reassurance that I was doing great, great, you know, that I was doing good, that people wanted to see what I had to offer. So I did a show with Manella. Manella came through Hamilton one time and um, that was fantastic. That particular show was amazing. There was actually three cis 
female drag performers in that show, which is kind of, you know, kind of unheard of. It was a little iconic, but uh, yeah. So yeah, Manella and um, Willem, (laughs) hoping for Willem, (laughs) which is really cute. Uh, Priyanka, I've worked with Priyanka before. Um, Yeah, so there's, there's, there's been a few Rue girls in my past. That is so probably fun. in my future. <laughs> I don't want to get away from one thing I did want to talk to you about. Uh, going back to the story times. Yeah. I think we gotta we gotta share a little bit about, you know, like people understand that there are there have been protests, there have been groups, hate groups. Um, they're coming at a lot of the performers, but specifically they're coming at the story time people because you're reading to children and they have these outlandish ideas in their heads. And I just want to like touch on that for a bit. Yeah. And get your opinion on what you kind the experience that's been like. Yeah. Well, I've, I've definitely had an experience with that. uh, Unfortunately, Um, it kind of just came out of nowhere. I feel like kind of like I was sort of the first first or maybe second performer to get like really attacked by this group of people that have been really targeting the uh the community within Ontario and um I just kind of started with the announcement of my Terry Berry Library event and um about a week before my event I just got a message on Instagram from this person that was like hey just to let you know um these people are posting images of you on their uh, flyers with hateful messages and they basically just you know been real sneaky and stole images of me off of my instagram uh, took them completely out of context and started spreading them all over the internet and uh, this whole group of people just jumped on this, you know what, we're going to come out and shut this event down because a photo of me at Halloween with me dressed as a devil was shared with the uh, image that says uh, drag equals 666 and drag is satanic. I did see that. And the way that they manipulated your photos and what they wrote, it, it was it was just uh, trying to make you look horrible. And honestly, I, I'm glad to see that a lot of people in the community did, you know, come to bat for you. Yes. Yeah. So on the plus side of that is I caught wind of it early. Mm-hmm. The person had actually posted on Facebook, like we're coming out to shut this down. So I was like, okay, well, I have a few friends in Hamilton. I think I'm just going to put a little call out on Instagram and Facebook and just be like, Hey friends, you know what? I kind of need you to stand with me today and I need you to show these people that they're not shutting our events down, that, you know, these are safe spaces. They're not welcome there and they're not going to, yeah, not going to shut us down. So it was, it, you know, honestly, um, I was terrified the week before going into that event um, the, the people are nasty online, you know, you know, the trolls I know it's online not easy and- to talk. I know it's not easy to talk about this and I just want to say I'm very thankful that you're willing to share your experiences. I know you you know you have to keep some things to yourself but even just yes. sharing this is huge. I know many yes. people in the community need to hear this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um yeah, it it was very difficult because yeah, as you know people online can be very nasty, but uh the library was completely aware of what was happening on and happening and honestly um they did everything in their power to keep me safe they had security in place they had you know police unfortunately um were needed and um they had an exit an entrance and an exit plan for me it was you know it was perfect but I was lucky enough to know that it was going to happen and I was lucky enough to call my community and there was for every one of them, there was four of us. 
and we were standing outside with flags and there was a person there with a guitar playing music of love and everybody started singing uh frozen let it go let it go and you know it was it was honestly like i know it was a protest like they were I, I you know I, I know it was supposed to be ugly and it was ugly on their side but our side was so bright and beautiful and full of love that I walked out of there I went in terrified I left my home that day kissing my children and telling them I love them being terrified but I walked out feeling empowered and full of love and knowing that, you know, I knew as scared as I was, I couldn't let them stop this, shut it down. I knew it needed to happen for my community. And I walked out feeling stronger and empowered. And it has only pushed me to want to offer more programs for youth and family in my community. And yeah, spread my message that this is, this is me. This is what I'm doing. And you can't stop me. And it's not a crime what you're doing. What you're doing is beautiful. Oh, it is absolutely not a crime. Oh my goodness. Look at me. All the clamp. Sorry. Sorry. Let me have my moment. No, I'm good now. Um, but um, I just had a moment too. Like, you know, hearing, <laughs> I mean, I'm, vic I'm very vicarious with people, but hearing, you know, kissing your kids goodbye and just that, like hearing what you're going through. Yeah. I mean, how can you not, how can you not feel that? And yeah. I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Just for trying to live my life authentically as myself and offer literacy to children and show them that there are diverse people in their community and offer them, you know, if I had had myself as a child, a young child and seeing these beautiful glittery people tell me this is okay. It, it, when I was a child, you didn't have people telling you this is okay. You know, it would have been so much easier for me, right? So many young people need that. Unfortunately, young people don't have that in their lives. And, you know, they're having thoughts, you know, and they need to see good, strong role models and other queer people in their community from a young age. I'm not making anybody queer. If you're queer, you're queer, you're coming in queer, but I am giving you myself as a queer person, as somebody to look to and say, look at this person, they're doing amazing. I can do amazing too. That's all. That's you're all. inspiring, you're inspiring. You don't make someone gay, we know that. We know yeah. that that's not how it works but you're inspiring and you're also allowing people to know, you know, that there are scary things that happen, but there are really good people that can come together and they can fight that. And I yeah. think that's really important now more yeah. than ever. Yeah. So can I yeah. ask you, can I ask you something a little lighter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to know about this drag persona, Hexi Noir. Can we get into this a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Because you're um, very interesting. Like, it's it's just, I don't know. I, I tried to share many of your photos because just the stuff you do is just wildly creative, which is not something I always say, but um, <laughs> I want to share a bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So Hexi, honestly, is just, I, I, I say sometimes, I feel like Hexi kind of has like two sides. There's, you know, um, the clown side of Hexy and the witchy side of Hexy. And I'm, you know, I'm, me as a person, I'm very inspired, like I said, by film and television and art and pop culture and stuff. And it's, you know, it's either the dark and the witchy and the spooky things, or it's the bright and, you know, sunny, uh, you know, Andy Warhol and, you know, geometric shapes and cartoons. So there's two very different sides, but Hexy kind of like embodies all of that. She is um, just the way I express my love of all things pop culture and queer uh, that that I'm really into, right? Yes. So I just like use her to perform and express all these these things inside me, right? So 
Yeah, I don't so know. It's, it's it's different. A lot of, a lot of drag performers, you know, um, they come up with you know one like solid persona. Like I'm gonna be the blonde queen, and I'm always gonna like I'm always gonna wear a mini skirt and this, and this is how she talks and how she acts all the time. And you know, I'm just a Kexi's kind of always changing and evolving, and uh, it's just all drawn by you know what I'm inspired by. So um, the I face stays pretty much the same. Yes. So you always know it's hexy. You know, there's there's little subtle changes here and there, but I can definitely turn this clown face spooky, you know, and uh, just change it up with the, in my styles, right? I think that's what I found so unique about it because, you know, a lot of people have their shtick, their gimmick, like what they do. And yeah. you are the third drag artist that I've had on this show. Um, but you remind me of, of one of the artists and that's Justin Preston, who goes by Diamond Heart Cartier, who you really never know what you're going to get with them either. So I, I've been drawn to those types of personas. I think the ones that, you know, can be anything. I really, yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. It's, it's very art based for me, right? Like, um, let's be honest. I'm a 300 pound woman. I'm never going to be doing flips and tricks and cartwheels and stuff. Not that, you know, I would want to anyway, but I am more about, you know, I will, um, have a confetti cannon or I'll in, in incorporate, you know, colored smoke into my performances, or I'll get a huge, massive Felcor puppet made that I can, I, I, I add, more theatrical I think like elements to it bubbles you know like you know I just I make it fun and campy I'm really I love campy drag right if I could do like a whole theatrical performance within one like drag number that's what I want to do I don't want to fall down on the ground and pick myself up <laughs> I think that's Not amazing happening. though like sky's the limit and people don't know exactly what they're going to get to see when they come see you so it's never going to be a boring show. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Songs speak to me like stories. When I listen to music, I, you know, I, I put it together almost like it's a mini play or performance and I can, yeah, envision all the, the theatrics that I want Alameda added to it. And I try to add that to my performance in the spaces that I can. And I think the body positivity to comment on that is really important as well because yeah. some people feel that they are not allowed to be in spaces because they don't fit in a certain box. And yes. I think you are showing people by loving yourself and putting yourself yeah. out there that anyone can do it. Yeah, I think that's another piece that kind of really had to, uh, I had to figure out as well before I started performing drag um, was becoming completely comfortable in my body and with myself as a plus size woman. I've always been a plus size woman, but um, it took a while and it was through, I think really, um, I had a plus size fashion blog for a number of years where I took photos and posted them. And I actually built uh, a belt up and I became, became you know, uh, quite known within the plus size community for my fashion blogging. And I think that really did a lot to help me uh, push me having eyes on me and my body and being a plus size woman 100% authentically taking up space in this world and being happy about it and being okay um for me to be like i can move into like more theatrical drag aspect and just take up all the space i want and do what i want right but i think that the blog really did help me you know the fashion thing move forward to want to do drag and then once I decided I wanted to drag we didn't have a queer bar in Hamilton at the time all the queer bars had closed down so it was basically little queer events happening in uh, straight space safe spaces and queer people coming out but there was no real drag going on at that time not in the clubs anyway. So I just was like, you know what, this is not okay. So I just started inserting myself into these spaces and saying, I'm going to start doing drag. 
And they were like, no, you're not girl. No, you're not. And I'm like, no, I know we don't have any clubs or bars, but this is going to happen. Like I'm going to start doing drag. So I just started going out to the clubs in drag just for a night out with my friends dancing to test the waters, to see, you know, how people in my community felt about me being out there and being taking up space in the, the community as a woman doing this. And the response I got was fabulous. You know, I, everybody, oh, you look so great. This you're born for this. Like, yeah, do this, do this. And, and it wasn't actually myself that, um, booked my first show or pursued getting on stage. Like I walked around a long time talking, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, but I didn't actually take that jump and do that. And a friend actually came up to me one night and said, there's a show next month and I've booked you and you're performing. <laughs> and they were like, they were like, you've talked about this long enough. You're coming out and drag all the time. People are really receptive to it and they want to see you. So you're doing the show. So I got booked. I went out the night of that show. The show was sold out, which was so beautiful with so many friends and family out there to support me. My friends had little Hexi Noir t-shirts made and, you know, plethora of tips and yells and applause. And I was tragic. Like, I'm going to be honest with you, that first performance it was not so cute, but we all have to start somewhere, right? Like we all have to yes. build up and get, and get better. But uh, just having so much love and support behind me from the people in my city who had never even seen me perform, you know, it really kind of was an amazing thing, you know, oh. and I am here now because of, you know, the, the support of friends and the people in the community just saying, you can do this girl, you got it. Well, now so, you're yeah. and, and you know, you can do it. Oh, well, now there's no going back. No right? stopping you. <laughs> not that I want to, not that I want to, because I absolutely, you know, this is, this is my heart. I love doing this. So I believe what you put out into this universe and the earth, and I believe it's helping. So I would never want you to stop. If anything, I just yeah. want to see you go straight to the top. I want the world oh, to yeah. see where you are. Honestly, yeah. I think better. Like I said, I'm working lots and booking blessed. I'm, I'm very happy. Yes. You, and you have such a good outlook on things and, the, and just the way that you talk about yourself and carry yourself. I mean, that is what needs to be visible to younger people in the queer community. Yeah, I really yes. believe that's important. I think so too. And you know what? I am hoping I can bring so much more of that to my community. I have many, many plans for the near future. And um, a lot of it really does focus working uh, with youth. And uh, I'm not going to give away too much because a lot of stuff is in the works, but um, yeah, I do. I see that. I, I see that I have something to offer and, and I, it, it honestly, it gives me as much as it gives other people. I, 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 you know, after my protest, I had that hot little moment of my world sort of like crumbling based on the hate. There was like posts with thousands of comments of hate. And when I got through that, I feel like I just like, it's like my superpower hit me. You leveled and up. I was, uh, yeah, exactly. I was like, I could see so clearly. And I was like, life feels better now than it ever has. And I feel so happy and fulfilled with what I'm doing and bringing to the world. So honestly, that protest was one of the best things that could have happened to me. It's made me stronger and it's made me better. And exactly like you just said, I feel like I've leveled up. I know other yeah. artists too that are um, feeling those those same feelings. Uh, they, they've had to experience those. I know um, there are people that are not doing what they want to do based on what's going on, but the ones that are able to, the ones that have that strength and they really want to do it, like they are showing up and like you said, it was scary, but you realize that there's a lot more love and this is needed. And I yeah. think that people need to understand. Um, I know I've had a lot of hate on the internet too, not to the level of you or some of the other people I know, but I know even just what I experienced was hard, especially, you know, when I had internalized it and actually read the comments. I know now, I know better. I'm sure you know better too. <laughs> Stay the hell oh, yeah, out of yeah. the conversation about you because it's not your it's none of your business what people think about you what you think exactly. about you is the most important 
Exactly. You know what? There's always going to be haters. Always. And I have no, no time, no time to, to be there. I got bigger, bigger things to focus on and, you know, um, but you know what? I will not stop talking about ways that we can, you know, uh, stop some of this nonsense that's taking place. I know currently, if you don't mind me mentioning here, um, you know, there are, there are, um, so, uh, Christian, Christian Wong Tang, uh, recently, uh, was in parliament to pass a bill that would stop, um, haters from coming within, uh, I think it's a hundred meters of any safe spaces, any spaces, uh, you know, um, safe spaces for queer performers uh so there's a petition please anybody that's that's out there and uh, is listening right now christian wong tam uh ndp leader there's a petition sign it it's to pass a bill so that people can't protest within 100 meters of our events that is so important and i will make sure that i put that on all of my uh social media platforms uh i'll make sure that there's a way that people can get to that because that's so important right now. More yes. like that, that needs to happen. And I believe there's yes. enough of us that we can make it happen. Yes, for sure. So thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you what advice would you give to um, anyone in the queer community that's looking to be more expressive and, and step out there on a stage or, you know, whatever it may be, even just to go to a club dressed the way they want? Like, what advice can you give? Um, honestly, I would say, you know what, start with finding a few close friends, people you really connect with that, you know, are on the same page as you, they will support you. And it, like I said, it was my friends. They really gave me the confidence to be like, I can do this and be authentically who I want to be. So I, I think, you know, I would start with it's lonely trying to do stuff that by yourself, right? Like, you know, always yeah. sort of um, connect with people of similar, similar mind and uh, ambitions. Go out and support your local drag events. I make a point when I'm uh, at my story times and my events to go up to all the families and introduce myself and and give my name and and talk to everybody in the family that the kids and the adults and whoever I talk to everybody. I want to connect and and know everybody. And I think through going out to events and meeting other drag performers you know, or meeting um, other kids at youth events, if you're a youth or, or whatever age you are, will give you a little bit more confidence, give you a little bit of knowledge, give you, give you a little bit of insight. And, and you know, I, anybody, anybody that has any questions or just, you know, would need a little boost of confidence or anything, you can always reach out to me. I will most definitely give any advice. I, I actually quite often get people uh, dropping into my Instagram and being like, will you be my drag mom? I really need a drag mom. And while I can't drag mom everybody, I do have a, a drag house with some drag daughters that um, I already work with. I am always there to ask wig questions, makeup questions, costume questions. You need a pep talk. I will give you a pep talk. You need to know where open stages are. I'm your girl. I know where the open stages are. If it's your first time getting into drag, anything, any resources you need, I am more than happy to help people out. So yeah, find people, I guess, like me that can, you know, just give you a little boost and, uh, and help you along your way. Right. I think we all need that, that. I think that we all, no matter who we are and what we're doing, we all need a circle. We all need a circle yeah. that cheers for us. And yeah. I'm going to close with that. We need yeah. a circle, get your circle. Cause that will help. Yes. You do anything find your you tribe, find your people. Yes. And I yeah. want to thank you so much, Hexy, for being on the show tonight and for talking about all of these things that, I mean, some people might not have had the insight had you not shared. So I want to thank you for that. We're not going anywhere just yet. We're going to do a Q and A. So if you're in the conversation and you have any questions you want to ask, feel free. Christine's going to come back and she's going to help us with that. Um, if you have questions after, find Hexy Noir, um, H-E-X-E, and the last is N-O-I-R-E. Am I right? Yep. And yep. you're basically on all platforms. So reach out. I yep. promise this yep. person is authentic and will be there to listen.
Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe time is like almost up already. That was so amazing. Forever, honestly. Amazing <laughs> and chill. I knew it was going to be so chill with you. You have such good vibes and this is such thank a good you. program. And it's an honor for me to be here opening pride with you. So thank you so much. Again, thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to everyone who watched and all the people that I'm going to share this with and watch tomorrow. Thank you so much. Christine, thank welcome you. back. Thank you so see. much. <laughs> Let's just say thank you one more time. <laughs> thank, you. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, this is fantastic. And um, if there's anyone on Zoom who would like to ask a question, you can do so in the Q&A function. So down at the bottom of your screen, um, I think it's the fourth little icon. Um, you'll see you can click there and put a question in there and I will read it out. If you're joining us on uh, Instagram, oh, not Instagram, sorry. <laughs> on Facebook Live, you can just put your question right in the comment because I'm monitoring that on my phone right now. Um, so if you have your questions, now is the time to ask them. Go for it. Um, we don't have a question yet, but we do have a comment from mainly Niagara. Um, just says, love her color physically and energetically. She is a beautiful person and there's a little rainbow emoji. And I couldn't agree oh. more. <laughs> I oh, thank you. That. <laughs> That's so lovely. Thank you. Um, I love coming back and being able to facilitate the questions because it always means that I get to ask the first one. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Of course. Okay. So my question is, do you have any pre-show um, like rituals or routines that you do? And if so, like, what are they? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, that's, that's, yeah. Um, I don't eat food, <laughs> which is probably <laughs> not something I should say, um, because I, I'm always afraid to perform on a full stomach, like running around and, uh, and whatnot. But honestly, no, I'm not, I'm not really like that. I, um, it takes me about four hours to get into drag. Oh my goodness. So generally, yeah, generally I'm a vinyl collector. So uh, I usually pick out a couple of my favorite vinyl and throw those on and just like totally just chillax and listen to music and, and paint my face. I used to go live on TikTok actually quite a lot and have people watch me put drag on, but I found that it takes me like honestly double the amount of time to put my makeup on, which is already a really, really long <laughs> time, right? <laughs> So I stopped doing the TikTok lives. That was sort of my ritual for a while, but now it's no, now mostly it's just music and uh, a sparkling water because I'm a sparkling water kind of girl. Um, and uh, lots of um, um, encouraging the other performers when I actually get to the event and having, you know, I love having a little like circle of ev all the performers, you know, like great show, great show and a little pep talk, but that's pretty much about it. Nothing, nothing specific. <laughs> so, I wish I had something really cute and interesting to tell you, but you know. <laughs> oh no, that's perfect. Um, so we did have a question. So first, this individual wants to say thank you for sharing your story. You are so brave and kind. Mama D loves you. Oh, uh, Mama D, hello, Mama D. <laughs> and Mama D also asked, how long does it take? to get ready, which you already answered four hours. Um, but they also mentioned your look is fabulous. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mama D. Free <laughs> mom hugs. Um, honestly, I say four hours to get into drag, but that's just to put like the makeup and the wig on. That's not taking into account the wigs I have to style, which sometimes can take like hours on end because I generally style my own hair, hairstylist by trade, my costumes um, I do, or my drag daughter. I have a drag daughter who's a seamstress, so she designs for me. So if you take into account, like, you know, obviously all the little bits and pieces, sometimes like I can be sitting in my living room crafting something for a week before I perform. I did Winterfest, uh, you know, in February and I sat hot gluing flowers on a dress for like a number of nights. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it is so much work to get into drag, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it could be a lot, but you know what? I love the process. So yeah. 
that's a good segue into my next question, which before I ask it, I will say there is another individual that made a comment. This is my first time seeing the coming out stories and it was great. So uh, thank, thank you to that person thank you. for coming out for the very first time and joining us. Uh, in our, this is our sixth year, right? Yeah. Alan? Our six wow. year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, and this is, this is kind of the spinoff of coming out stories, living out stories so that we could dive into a little more of the life. So, uh, and that's what we absolutely did tonight with Hexi. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've so got, much. I have one more question and hopefully oh. that'll give anyone else a little bit more time if they um, come up with a question of their own or, you know, get brave enough to ask the question. Um, what is your favorite costume or like your favorite performance that you've ever done? Um, one of the images that you gave us for the marketing was you dressed as Ursula, which you said was one of your first personas. And I was a little mermaid fiend when I was a kid. And so when you said that, I was just like, oh my God, totally fangirling. But I want to know what your favorite performance or costume that you've ever done. Oh, well, like, cues. you know, <laughs> like songs and music, it's always very hard to pick one, but uh, I do, I will always have a soft spot for Ursula. Like I said, Ursula is created from Divine. Ursula is the first look that um, I did on stage with a Rue performer. I did a performance where I had uh, Ariel with me and um it was a naughty performance. It wasn't for an all ages group. I'm going to say that right now, um, where I uh, pretty much did a uh, rope tie on Ariel on stage. So when Ursula steals her voice, I put a little ball in her mouth, did a rope tie on her, and then did a performance to Rihanna's uh, s and So if you can imagine Ursula and Ariel, you know, having a hot little moment. <laughs> Uh, that was that performance. And then I also um, have one uh, where I have a dress that I can stuff balloons all up underneath the dress. So uh, for one of my performances, I filled my whole dress with balloons. It was for Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, which typically is not my vibe, but it was for a contest. So I had no choice in the track, but I made this look that was very New York club kids of black and white checkers, shoved all these red balloons up my dress. And then I had this reveal where I could untie a string and lift my skirt up and all the balloons came out from underneath my dress and all floated to the roof of the club. And it was such a cool effect being all in black and white with all these red balloons just coming out of my body. So I was actually, I was really proud of that one as well. Oh my goodness. I feel like that was like, just, I just had like chills the way the first time I saw the Sasha Velour, the wig, right? Like I had that it same was, it, feeling. Just it was similar to that, but <laughs> yes, yes. It, it was similar to that for sure. For sure. Amazing. And I also did David Bowie Space Odyssey one time with a full like space helmet on and confetti <laughs> cannons and stuff. And that was, you know, I love David Bowie. So, well, I think all of all of you sharing these performances has inspired this one individual to say, I'm not sure if I missed it, but does Hexy have any upcoming shows? <laughs> We need to oh my see goodness. live in person. <laughs> yes, yes. I have a lot of stuff going on uh, for Pride. I think I have about the whole month of Pride. I have about 18 different events. So what I would suggest is, yeah, if you want to catch me, I'm in Hamilton. All my shows are going to be in Hamilton. I don't really travel to Toronto and stuff to perform. I like staying within my city. So Hamilton, Bimbrook, just follow me on Instagram because every day I'm on my stories, letting people know like where I am. But this Sunday, Bimbrook Pride. Come out to Bimbrook Pride because it's going to be fantastic. Full afternoon, full of drag. And I have three performances planned that I'm super stoked about. So if you're available, come see me Sunday in Bimbrook. Awesome. Fantastic. I just want to say, I promise if you follow this person on social media, it will make your life, um, it will enrich your life. She, oh. she is colorful and she's creative and I just, it's a true inspiration to me. Oh, thank you. Oh, can welcome. I just mention one more thing about social media? Mm -hmm. I just, I just announced today, 
uh, Hexi Noir's first coloring contest for kids for pride. So I had a coloring sheet done up and it's on my Instagram. So if anybody's watching and they have kids or know people that want to have kids, um, it's a pride coloring contest. There's going to be uh, four prizes and it'll be really cute just to see all the different visions of art come through for pride and be able to share those with everybody. It's uh, sponsored by Rise Above Pizza and Wings here in Hamilton. So uh, yeah, you can like, come out to Bimber Pride and get a printed copy of it to color, or there's a link where you can like directly print it off my Instagram. So uh, yeah, family coloring contest for Pride. Awesome. I also I have love one Rise more about. thing. <laughs> one more thing. I love to do giveaways. So anybody that commented or asked a question today, you're going on Facebook or in here, um, we're going to put your name into a draw and I'm going to send you just a small little prize package with some, a friendship bracelet, uh, for pride and some pride stickers and some cool stuff. So thank you so Yay. much for everyone. That's so nice. Yes. Thank you and everyone and happy pride. Yes, for sure. And Hexi, it looks like you've got one more follower on Instagram. The person who was asking about your upcoming shows just said, just followed. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that. Your thank social you. media presence. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that we've had all of our questions and, oh, and just a quick, um, there's one more comment. Thank you, Fallon and Hexi. Um, so thank you, on Adam. that note, you. <laughs> I thank think you, we'll thank you. Good night for the night. Um, Fallon, thank you so much for continuing to program these amazing series for the Niagara Falls History Museum and the City of Niagara Falls. We so appreciate all of the work that you put into them. And Hexi, thank you so much for coming out and um, kicking off Pride Month for us with a, a bunch of, with a riot of color, let's say. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I wear my most colorful outfit. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. You're Everyone welcome. have a lovely evening and happy Pride. Happy Pride. Bye. 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 Bye.